Congratulations, what a powerful film. So my first question for you today is, tell me about the responsibility that you felt to make sure that you just, you got it just right. Yeah, the response, there was a huge amount of responsibility, especially when you meet the family, you know, and you, you understand where they're coming from and feel where they're coming from. And like, you understand the emotional stakes of, of what is play, at play is like a family's legacy, you know? And um, so this is like one of the, one of the first films to really um, show uh, the Black Panther Party in a fictional narrative, you know, and, and focus on it. So it was a huge, huge responsibility, you know, and, we, and we're here to serve. What were your first thoughts when you found out that uh, you were going to be portraying William O'Neill? What the hell? <laughs> it's honest, that's honest. Yeah, I didn't really want to do it at first. Um, and, you know, I thought I'd be playing Fred. I was just, uh, I just made that assumption. And then um, later I started to realize it might be a unique challenge for me, an opportunity just, just to help aid the story in a different way, you know. You, you always give it 1,000%, and this is no exception. So my first question to you today about the film is the intensity level. How intense was this for you? Well... Obviously, it's it's more intense anytime you're you're playing people that that really existed, real people. Um, but I guess just obviously the weight of the story um, and the fact that that uh, more people aren't aware of of the story. You know, this would be probably you knew that this would be some people's sort of introduction into this story, and so. There was a big level of responsibility and, um, you know, Fred Jr. was on set and that always adds um, a, a weight and, a, you know, a, a, an added sense of responsibility. Um, and it was just a really, really wonderful script. So, and, and incredible people involved. So that, that always makes you want to, you know, give your best. How do you prepare for a role like this? Yeah, um, I have to give like a big shout out to our director, writer, Shaka King. He really allowed it to be a safe space for me to communicate just in terms of how I wanted to represent this character. And, you know, I wrote a lot, I journaled a lot. So I really came from an instinctual place, you know, um, uh, writing poems about the moments that they have together, their first kiss, the first time she sees them, and really allowing myself to get into the character based, like, based mostly on what was happening internally, you know? And um, that's how I kind of approached it. Tell me what it was like, you mentioned this briefly a second ago meeting with the family, but your first impressions and when they were aware of the film being made, what what, what were your thoughts then, you know, your first impressions meeting with the family? Uh, my first impressions was, um, you know, it like naturally they, they, how much they care, you know, and how much they love. Chairman Fred and how much they love themselves and how much they love their people and their community. And they, they are uncompromising with, with that, you know, and, uh, and I have a deep, 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 deep respect for that. The conflict with the character, you know, good guy, bad guy, that had to have played into the challenge aspect of, you know, portraying this person, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think when we think about people in those general terms, it, I don't know if it's, um, and if it's always accurate, thinking of people in terms of good and bad. So I try to just derive a little bit more and dive into the, the little detailed parts of the, of the human that I can find. And Eyes on the Prize interview in long form provided some context because I could see the inter <laughs> internal struggle happening in William in the interview. And so I wanted to kind of bring that, try and bring that out in the performance. One takeaway that I had from seeing this film was now I'm doing more research on Chairman Fred and how does one get ready to play the CIA agent? Because if the acting thing doesn't work out for you, which I'm joking, you could be a great detective, man. I was convinced. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I read a little bit. There wasn't a ton of, of information about Roy. There was, there was a picture in his obituary and a little write up. Um, I didn't, I didn't speak to any of his family members and Shaka and I, you know, early on, you know, decided that the, the most important part of this uh, was, was sort of what function it serves in the movie. And, and the thing that I found interesting 
whether or not it was it was the 100 percent way that it happened or not you know i i know there were there were men in the fbi that were forced to make decisions like this um some probably didn't think twice and some you know, had to look into their souls and decide what they were willing to go along with. And Roy had a chance and just slowly after, after, you know, choosing one path over and over again, it becomes easier to make the bigger decisions. And so it was, it was interesting to, to play, to, to play that and just to, to see that trajectory. You have a powerful scene, and I'm sure you've been asked about this, but I'm going to ask you uh, the revolutionary speech scene. I want to know what was going through your mind and what you could feel in your body as you were delivering those words. Uh, I mean, I used to do improvisation, and there's this saying that I kind of coined for myself, is that once you're in your head, you're dead. You know what I'm saying? So I, w I wasn't in my mind. You know what I mean, I was completely present. And I wasn't thinking. I was just here, and I was just like, and it was the first time we'd said Chairman Fred's words verbatim, and I, I just allowed myself to be a vessel in that moment. But it was a, it was a, it was a time machine to an extent, you know. And, and it, it was incredible that like the the background artists and the people of Cleveland were really listening to what was being said, and so it was it was a really special moment. If I'm not mistaken, you actually wrote a poem talking about your writings, a poem that was used in the film. Yes, yes, the poem that uh, Deb shares with Chairman Fred. Um, uh, about having a baby is one that I got the opportunity to write. When I met with Shaka and he told me he wrote the role for me, he said, I want you to read the script and let me know your thoughts. And so I read the script and I sent him an email about everything that I loved. And I said, I have two thoughts, but I don't want to overstep. So um, let me know if you want to hear them. He said, you'll be playing her. You can't overstep. And uh, one of them was that she says, do you love, do you like poetry? And we don't hear a poem, but the Panthers are and were very poetic. Um, and I think we missed an opportunity. He said, I think you're right. Do you want to take a shot at that poem? So that's how it, it came to be. I want to talk about working with Jesse Plemons. Um, there are some heated scenes, just emotionally driven scenes. Tell me what to your mind as you were uh, portraying those, uh, you know, knowing that these people existed. I'm going to try and be <clears throat> as accurate to the reality as you can be. Um, Jesse's really talented, so you know he made it. He made it. He made it fun in moments, and he made it um, a smooth transition, a smooth thing to be in a scene with him because he's just so damn good. And um, and he's also accurately, and as as you see in the film, in real life, um, on set at least, scary. Off set, he's just a normal, uh, great guy. But on set, he created this like really kind of callous, cold character which, um, you know, made our back and forth just that much more genuine. What impact does this role have on you personally? It is a powerful role. By the way, congratulations on the, uh, the, the news about you today and everything that's coming out. I'm very excited for you. But what impact does this role have on you? It shows the, uh, the, uh, the importance of loving your, your own, loving your community, loving your peoples around you and pouring love into them. Um, and and the importance of independent thought, and the importance of of not only dwelling in theory, but also making sure you convert that into practice, which I think what the Black Pepper Party was about. That's awesome. That you must be really really proud of that. How would you describe the relationship between Deborah and Chairman Fred? Yeah, um, I would describe it as um, unconditional love. I think we throw that word around a lot, but what I learned in being on set as just a person and an artist, um, I realized that my cast loved me unconditionally because they didn't need or want anything from me. They just wanted me around. And I think it's the same thing with, with Chairman Fred and Deb. You know, they just want each other around. And what do you hope that people talk about after they see this film? Because there will be conversations. What do I hope? Yeah, what do you hope? I mean, I, I've got hopes too, what I hope people talk about. You've already kind of mentioned it, the love, but I, I want to know what you hope people say. You know, I hope I hope they speak about like the work that the incredible work the Black Panther Party did was healing the healing healer, healing the sick, feeding kids, educating kids, uh, and and 
and how they they just love their community, you know? And uh, also just seeing about how the Rainbow Coalition, how incredible that is in in um, with Chairman Fred managing to, to find union and points of interest with people they have conflicts with, you know, which is like the, the Confederate flag wearing and um, bearing whites and, and the Hispanic community, like joining them together in the sense that, and showing that like, wow, we're, we're in this together. We're, we're, we're stronger together. What impact did it have on you to be a part of this film? Yeah, it was a big challenge for me. And um, I mean, I've always wanted to be a part of something like this that sheds light on historical figures that were, you know, tantamount to my development and like, you know, just big, big figures in history in general. So it's quite nice. And I'm glad that it's in a more accurate depiction and display of what the Black Panthers are and were um, and not um, some propaganda piece that attempts to try and paint them out in a negative light, but it actually shows the way in which the government helped, you know, contribute to some of the negative um, aspects of what we see as the Black Panther Party. So, so I'm happy. What was it like to film knowing that, yeah, in, in a loose way, these, these things did play out, like you said, but what's going through your head? What are you feeling emotionally? Well, there's all, there's always, an energy on set, good or bad, you know, uh, or in between. But with this, it, there, there was just a, a sense of purpose that, that it, it, it felt bigger than any individual. Yeah, it just felt like it, all of the, the, the BS sort of, <laughs> sort of goes aside. And it's not about you, it's about the story and elevating that and, and being as honest as you can. And yeah, those are the types of, of stories you want to be a part of, you know. I'm going to close with this. Um, what impact does this role have on you personally? Oh, yeah, it changed my life. It allowed me to know, to trust differently, to trust Black men differently, to know how I wanted to navigate the world. I have a, a new idea of wo womanhood and I have a direction that I'm, I'm proud and excited to go towards in terms of uh, fully realizing myself. 